Hello everyone, it's Tom. Today in this video we will look at the first Diablo 4 update block. It includes the following topic like UI design changes, controller support, couch coop UI and the new monster family, the cannibals. And we compare these UI changes to what we saw last year in the BlizzCon. The game developers try to communicate with players very actively, they want feedbacks. If you remember the announcement of D4 and after this most of the feedbacks were about itemization and endgame. Thereafter they post two system design blog about these topics too. And now with this blog they started a series. This is a very positive thing. Now check the first part of this. Let's start with the item icons and inventory changes. They saw a lot of feedback around the inventory either regarding its coloring, the styles and size of the item icons or overall aesthetic. They are not planning to bring back different sized items. To be honest, I am thankful for that. I don't want packet management. Just pick up an item and if I want to use it, I just swap it and no more reposition in the inventory. A piece of jewelry is the same size as one armor piece is not a problem for me. So, no more Tetris inventory. But I think there is another reason for that. This is the first time a Diablo game is being developed simultaneously for both PC and console, so maybe they want to avoid packet management with console. As for the item icon style, they change it to a more natural realistic design. Personally, I like this. If I just see the new icon style, I think these are perfectly fit into the game's gothic medieval graphic style. Now let's see the inventory. If you look at the new one and compare it to what we saw last year in the BlizzCon, you can see a few things changed. They have reorganized the layout of the inventory to what is a hopefully a more balanced composition. You can see the new affixes like angelic, demonic and ancestral power and attack and defense stats. And you can see there are some tab control for items and different materials. I would say the new one is much better in my opinion. What do you think about it? We have talked about items and inventory and I found something in the first gameplay trailer of D3 which is related to this inventory topic. Just see the items and character position. It's a similar composition. I just remember this video. It was so good and later something has changed to a wrong direction in my opinion. But this is an another story. So now go back to D4. The next little thing that they will allow you to rebind left click to force move and we will able to assign any slot from to get go. They work more on action bar position. In the BlizzCon demo you could see the left position variant. Now they are going to move the default position of the action bar back to the bottom center to the PC players. This decision based on usability test result and feedbacks. They will stick the corner configuration on console and they offer both left and center position as options on PC. I have already mentioned, this is the first time when a Diablo game is being developed simultaneously for both PC and consoles. They decided to support controllers on PC too. They wanted to give players the ability to switch between the two options freely, so the UI needed to be unified enough, which means the layouts are more grid based for easier navigation. But they claim the controller support shouldn't be a limiter on how complex the game can be. But I think most people are afraid that this console development will negatively affect the game. I just hope everything is gonna be fine. A lot of players enjoyed couch co-op in Reaper of Souls. And the biggest complaint was the inability to do anything while one local player had a UI screens open. For D4, they decided to focus on improving this. In the favor two-player co-op, the player's UI screen can be opened independently or at the same time. If you see this picture, they changed the UI design of the talent tree too. The skills with these little gothic windows as background icon are very good. Something similar would be good in the talent tree. I'm just thinking, just imagine the background of the talent tree as a big cathedral window, just like this. The line in the window would be good for talent tree progression line. It should be a simple color illustration. In this way, the little colorful gothic icon like in the skill tree would be easily visible. And I think a little bigger talent tree with more options would be good. But as we all know, this is still in a very early stage. The second part of this blog is about monster design and family. 
and now they introduce a new one, the cannibals. In D3, they classified monsters into broad categories like demon, unholy, undead, humanoid or wildlife. In D4, they want to create a vast, a seamless world, so they need slightly different approach to world building and storytelling. It requires building sanctuary as a living, breathing character, especially through its creatures. Every monster has been redesigned, but in a darker, more gritty art style. They have handcrafted every creature you will encounter from the ground up. That includes demons, NPCs, egg bosses and even the scrutinizing critters you can crash underfoot. This is a positive thing. Now at this stage, many players talk about the importance of the endgame and itemization, but for me these details like the world, monsters and lore are important too. When I will start to play this game via story, I just want to explore every corner of the map, talk to NPCs, collect everything and the most important, I want to feel like I'm a part of this world in especially in my first playthrough. And we all know, after this 20 or maybe 30 hours of gameplay, the endless farming will begin. So the monster design is a really important thing in the long term. They organize monsters to different families and archetypes. Each archetype play different role in a combat. Last year in BlizzCon they introduced the drowned family and now they introduced the cannibals. Just a piece of lore. No one is certain where they come from, but some legends claim they are the former banished tribe of barbarians. The cannibal family has four members. Each type has their own unique weapon and a different silhouette or stance to help them discern from one another. Cannibals have two melee combatants. One's wielding a two-handed great sword cleaver, the other one is using a halberd which allows cannibals to leap at players from great distances. Bruisers use spike at clubs to deliver intense blows. Dual axe wielding swarmers unleash a flurry of kick frontal attacks. This family will have no ranged units, but they will have supernatural sweetness to make combat feel more frenetic. So we got some important UI design changes and we learned something about monster design and philosophy. If we sum up these things what we know since last year November, I think the direction is good. I understand at this stage we don't know too much about itemization and endgame. But just to highlight a few things. The art direction is really good, because this much more realistic gothic medieval effect is a proper for Diablo game, I think. And it seems to me they try to pay attention to every little detail in the world of Sanctuary. As we move forward in development, I hope that they keep or can keep that direction of philosophy. This is the another reason why I think this block series is a good idea provides an opportunity for communication between players and developers, so hopefully these things lead to a good or even a better game. I think we covered everything. I hope you have enjoyed this, if you have please thumbs up and subscribe so you don't miss anything in the future. Thank you so much for watching. I will see you in the next one. Peace.